Today's Patreon dedication is for Jason Belk. Thank you, Jason. Brennard versus Baluna, Darian, and Shadowheart with the background at Shameless Charlatan. Uh, we've got two lands and a Wood Elves. Takes us into Sky Shroud Claim. We just hope that we draw into a land here. We've got three chances. Alright, managed to get into a Scalding Tarn, which is exactly the land that we're going to play this turn. It's a Vamp Tutor from the Demir player on turn one. Weathered Wayfarer from Darien, and he is last in the turn order, so should be able to get some good use out of this thing. Baluna playing a Plant Beans. Uh, so that is... You can play an additional land this turn. And they do. Throwing out a Carney Territory. Okay, another land. I'm not against it, although we don't want to draw lands for the rest of the game. We'll just get that in tapped. Lightning Greaves for Shadow Heart. And then we see an Ancient Tomb played out before activating the Weathered Wayfarer. There are three lands over here, thanks to the ramp, so can still go for that. But probably should have waited on the land drop. Not activating the Wayfarer anyway, that is a Brave the Sands. Alright, so our opponent, the team of player, went for Verdant Mastery. We ended up with an Island, and our opponent got a couple of lands there, so... That's fine with me, we can actually make use of that mana. Uh, that means that we can jump ahead with a Sky Shroud Claim this turn. Get a couple more tap lands going. Drew into uh, when Magic Online decides to wake up. The Ottawara this turn, by the way. Alright, and seeing a Nazgul deck from our opponent, we'll assume that they do have 9 Nazgul in here. So uh, that becomes the Ring Bearer. And it can't be blocked by creatures with greater power than it. And that is a 2-3 with now Shroud, Haste and Death Touch. So we'll probably go down the middle, unless they want to hold it back. No, it instead goes in at the Balloona player. Oh, I'm actually thinking of the previous game where this player wouldn't leave the player to the left alone. That was the Rakdos player, I'm <laughs> getting the games confused. Weathered Wayfarer being activated now, so... Yeah, plenty of ramp going on from the green players. We'll be able to activate that for the rest of the game. I think they should have activated this during the previous turn as well and held off on Brave the Sands. Don't see how relevant this is going to be. Decided not to attack in with this first as well and deal some damage. No shiny, crazy land from the Weathered Wayfarer, just a basic plains and into Thalia. So that's creatures and non-basic lands come in tapped. And going for the Seek Thrills on the Balloona, so milling seven and all the adventure cards going into hand. So yeah, none of that was put into the revealed zone, annoyingly. So uh, does it show us in the log? I mean, I don't know what any of these things are. Anyway, you can look here to see what was milled. Maybe you know the name of the cards better than I do. And after that it was a Merchant of the Veil as well, discard and draw. So getting rid of a land in the bin is Prismatic Omen. I'm sure they don't want the Lucky Clover in there, probably one of the best cards in the deck. And Chancellor of Tales is a really good one as well. Alright, there's a Duplicant for us. Um, if we go for a Forest we can go for our Commander and the Wood Elves, which should be fine. does mean that the Ottawara will be coming down tap next turn, but... Might be that we don't play it as a land at all. So we'll throw out the Wood Elves and ramp a bit more. Yeah, it does bring in the land untapped actually. I suppose what I could have done was gone for the Wood Elves first. Got the untapped land in and then gone for the uh, Commander after that. That would have given us the chance to get this in tapped, but I think we've got a surplus of mana anyway. And the Commander coming down here, Shadow Heart, Dark Justicia. So uh, that gets the Lightning Greaves thrown onto it. And the Nazgul deciding to hold back. Darien King of Keldor coming into play, so seeing two commanders in a row. And there we go, four commanders in a row. Baluna Grand Squall also coming into play tapped because of Thalia. And then we see a Fertile Footsteps, so search for a land, put it into play. And they can still afford a permanent for two mana, thanks to Baluna discounting it. Merchant of the Veil comes in, and that has an expensive rummage effect on it. Alright, so we've got another non-basic land here. We can probably just hold on to the Ottawara, so I might as well get the Arid Mesa down. And do we duplicate on the Darien? Because they're bringing all the stuff in tap with Thalia? Yeah, I think that's okay. So successfully managing to throw that back into the command zone. That is all we can do here, but we'll hold up counter magic in order to make our opponents worry. Rivendell has come into play now. Entered on tap thanks to controlling the commander. And they sacrifice the Nazgul, so that draws them some cards. And into some more ramp in the form of a Thought Vessel. Weathered Wayfarer being activated again for the white player. 
And then following up with an anointed procession, which we could do with on our side of the field, actually. Waiting on a sack outlet at the moment. And then down to three cards in hand, a crackdown. Non-white creatures with power three or greater don't untap during their controller's untap steps. That doesn't affect us at the moment. It does affect the ballooner though, so that stays tapped. It affects this commander as well, and that actually needs to tap with its tap ability. Demir's going to struggle to get rid of a crackdown. So we could have the Demir player uh, distracted by the mono white deck over here. Which means we don't necessarily have to worry about him. Beanstalk Giant being played now. That is a 10-10 thanks to controlling 10 lands. Alright, there's an austere command which we can get rid of the enchantments with. So we could do a deal with this player. Um, yeah, he is asking whether we can deal with it. Not sure what that player can do for us though. We'll go for a thought cast, draw two cards. We'd want more artifacts in play than this really, but while the game's going reasonably slow, we'll take the opportunity to take a turn off. Just get a basic planes with that so it doesn't come into play tapped. All right, and into a basic island means that we can still go for the austere command if we want to. So maybe we could go for small creatures and enchantments. So I'm just uh, trying to come to a deal with my opponent here. He's just gone for it straight away. No bluffing from my opponent whatsoever. So let's go for the cast on the austere command. Might have done this anyway, in all honesty. Enchantments and small creatures keeps our commander in play. And we don't have any enchantments to lose anyway. We're going to get another wood elves out of this. So yeah, this works out quite well for us. A very productive turn. Our opponent should let this through because he only loses the Merchant of the Veil. Could rummage on the way out, decides not to. So we're wiping out the mono white player's board pretty much. Our Brennard will trigger, exiling the Wood Elves and we'll get a token copy of that. Might have been that the Demir player doesn't have a lot of counters and spot removal in the deck anyway. So it is the reason that he decided to go for the, um, for the deal there with us. Uh, what else obviously enters and gets us a forest and again we're not going to go for the skull clamp because we don't have anything that we can do with that really so we'll go for Brennard into the right and duplicate down the middle so obviously our opponent's commander allowed to untap now thanks to the crackdown disappearing and we see another Nazgul they are two of the same artwork which is absolutely sacrilege the only thing worse you could do than that is play a white bordered card, I think. Anyway, it goes to level 2. Whenever your ring bearer attacks, draw a card, then discard. And the 3-4 commander not holding up its ability. Just going in towards the mono white player. Going to loot in doing so. And discarding another Nazgul, so that one has a different artwork. No, they actually don't have double black, so can't hold up the ability. Have a bunch of blue mana available. Right, a mass calcify now, destroying all non-white creatures, so it's not exile at least. Are we going to see a counter here? That is a psionic pulse, so countering a non-creature spell. We all seem to be ganging up on the white player. So really wants to keep that beanstalk giant. And then swords to plowshares <laughs> from the white player. I mean, he's bringing it on himself in all fairness. That goes on the beanstalk giant, gaining 10 life over there. Probably should have... Waited to see where that swings in first, but I suppose letting a blue player untap means that it might open up more counter magic. So there's a Sapphire Dragon in the Exile Zone and a Beanstalk Worm. Alright, and that was a Flaxen Intruder going for the Welcome Home and then the Flaxen Intruder, so making some bears. And then whenever it deals damage, combat damage to a player, sacrifice it and destroy an artifact or enchantment. Alright, this time drawing into a Bronze Guardian, so... I think, yeah, we're going to do some skull clamp stuff here. Put it on the wood elves. That'll cost us four mana to gain three life and draw two cards. And then we can still go for the bronze guardian if we don't draw into anything. So, yeah, I think that's fine here. So play clamp and throw it onto the wood elves. Uh, this player is holding up priority, so might have a means of doing something about this. But the... Skull Clamp is being allowed to resolve here and be equipped, so Skull Clamp draws us two cards, we gain three life from the food, and that draws us into Tishana. Yeah, we don't have too many creatures in play at the moment, unfortunately. Throw out the Misty Rainforest, keeping hold of the Atawara still. Yeah, let's just throw out the Bronze Guardian. So that is a 5-7, giving our Artifacts Ward 2, has Ward 2 itself. And it is a golem, so it gets buffed by the Brennard. 
Uh, Brennard, the most likely to go down here. Hmm. Could go down to Exile from the Darien player. The Teema player might be more likely to use Destruction Magic, but there's Ward on the Duplicant. I think I'll just go for Skull Clamp onto Brennard. Uh, so yeah, we will call it a day there. Might just go for Tashana next turn if we still have creatures in play. I'll deal some commander damage down the middle because I don't intend on blocking with the commander anyway. My opponent's into double black now, two swamps available. There is a Nazgul. I'm going to go for a Tundra so that we can pass through the turns quicker here. Um, yeah, we'll go for a Tundra so that our opponents worry about counter magic. So the ring going up to level 3. It will gain the ability when a ring bearer becomes blocked by a creature. That creature's controller sacrifices it at the end of combat, so... It's going to be difficult to block the ring bearer, but if we do, we're going to lose it. Uh, turning the commander into a ring bearer, which is quite surprising. It's been buffed up to a 4-5 though, so it's a good piece of sack fodder for the commander. And swinging in with the 4-5 towards all of these um, bear tokens, which, yeah, they can gang up on the Nazgul here. But the team of player has been holding something up, and we're going to find out what it is now. Did go for green mana. It's now a blue mana, and uh, that is return a creature to its owner's hand for a bounce, so uh, they will have the capsizing wave in exile. Uh, if this spell doesn't resolve, does it still go into exile? Because they sacrifice the Nazgul there to draw some cards with the commander. No, it doesn't still go into exile, so the Sword Coast Serpent goes into the graveyard instead. And we see an arcane signet for some more black fixing. Alright, that is a Gauntlet of Power, which will buff all of the basic planes here. We've only got one basic planes in play. I think it's just basics on this, isn't it? Yeah. So getting into some more basics might be relevant. And then it's Odric Master Tactician. So it needs more creatures to attack him with. They have not got down their commander again yet. But that does mean our opponent's got no cards in hand. And is valiantly still playing it out. Sapphire Dragon being cast from exile by the team of player. So when it attacks or blocks, scry 2. And then Garenbrig Growth, return a target creature or land from graveyard to hand. So what is that targeting? That's going after the Chancellor of Tales. So able to bring that back to hand. And this is the new mana tripler as well. So if they get that down for 7 mana, they'll have a whole bunch of mana available as long as it's on the basics. They do have a lot of basics in play here. Alright, and speaking of which, we draw into a basic plane, so... Get that down here, we're not struggling to get into lands, but nice to have the double mana available on that. So uh, we'll go for the Tashana to draw some cards here. And it gives us a bit of wrath protection as long as our Brennard can stay in play. Need to be sure to tap this down for mana whenever I get chance as well, just in case the team of player bounces. He will take the land with him, of course. So Tashana enters play, we draw a card for each creature we control, which is obviously four at the moment. Alright, and that is... Anointed Procession, we spoke up before, a Meteor Golem, and yet more lands. Do have a Sack Outlet in the High Market as well, which could be relevant. So do we just plan on Meteor Golem now? Maybe we can sacrifice the Tashana next turn and draw even more cards. Yeah, I think we're fine to go for the Golem and blow up the Sapphire Dragon. I would probably go for the Lightning Greaves, but I've uh, got to deal with this player that he's going to leave me alone, so hopefully he's true to his word. Um, do we go for a re-equip with Skull Clamp now? Just in case we've got less mana to mess about with next turn. Yeah, I think putting it on the Tashana ready for sacrificing it next turn should be fine. Hopefully. And the Meteor Golem is of course a Golem as well, so it's getting buffed by our commander. That is a 5-5 with Trample. And Ward 2, thanks to the Bronze Guardian, which will go straight down the middle. Not going too crazy at the white player, but... Can't go too easy on him either. If you allow players to get back into the game, it can really warp how it turns out. So just deciding to take the hit for 14 here. And the one player who wants to be taking damage is taking damage without his commander in play, unfortunately. So zero cards in hand goes down to five. And I do appreciate the Darien player playing this out after getting rid of his board wipe and interactions and things. After our austere command, that's what really hosed him, but... Like I said, he has decided to play it out anyway, which is admirable on the rare occasions that people actually do that. Sauron the Necromancer into play now, and that is going to have haste put on it. Exile a creature from your graveyard, create a tapped attacking token copy of it. 
So obviously they're uh, really focused on the Nazgul here. Decided not to attack in with this thing though. It does have menace, so it could have got through to the white player. And it would have left him alive, so shouldn't feel too bad about it. Shifting the Lightning Greaves back over to the commander. So instead decide to just give up on Sauron the Necromancer entirely and draw some cards to it. So Darian being given another turn and comes down with five life available. One card in hand. Has the Ancient Tomb not quite switched off. It would have been if our opponent had swung in with this. So being allowed to go down to three life and take two damage to that makes a couple of soldier tokens. Which next turn will switch on the Odric. Plus one, plus one anthem effect on all these as well from the Gauntlet of Power. Our opponent fetched it out of the bin previously and that is a Chancellor of Tails coming into play now. Not worthy that it does have flying, so do need to bear that in mind if we're ever going to fly over there at any point. And then a far seek for the team of player. Still wary of counter magic over here. I've been considering the organic extinction. It would get rid of our commander is the problem. Alright, there's another creature in the form of Blade Splicer, and just in time for the Anointed Procession as well makes the Tashana a lot better. So let's get down the high market before I make a mistake and play another land instead. Throw out the Anointed Procession as well, and the team of player is holding up priority here, so if he counters the Procession it might open us up to go for the Organic Extinction, allowing it into play. So let's... Fully commit and go for a Blade Splicer. As long as we can keep Brennard in play, then we've got Wrath Protection. Blade Splicer gives our Golems first strike, and it comes in, thanks to the enchantment we just played, with a couple of what will be 5-5 five, five Golems. And those have Trample, First Strike, and Ward 2. So not bad for 3 mana. Bronze Guardian is a 9-8 with Trample and Double Strikes, so I think we can deal with this white player now. Take the Meteor Golem into the right. Um, Tishana can go into the right as well, and the Bronze Guardian down the middle should be alright. Fortunately for our opponents, we haven't got into a sack outlet yet. So now the team of player is doing something. Has to consider the ward. That is a Lagoon Breach. Uh, what is that? The owner of a target attacking creature you don't control. Put it on top or on the bottom of the library. We'll make them pay the ward cost before... We look at doing anything else. Don't think we're going to do anything else here. We'll draw into the Meteor Golem if they put it back on top of our library. Okay, so the Lagoon Breach going at the Tishana. Uh, that is obviously the copy from the Chancellor of Tales. Yeah, we'll sacrifice the Tishana before this resolves. And whilst the Meteor Golem is still in play, we'll draw two cards to the Skull Clamp, gain a life to the High Market, and... Brennard will bring the Tashana back into play. Okay, and before damage is dealt, this player decides to scoop. I don't think lifelink or anything is going to be relevant, so hopefully that won't make a difference. Exiling Tashana from the bin, and we get two copies of it, but both of them will trigger. Um, doesn't matter which one we keep, and we've got a lot of creatures in play here, so we're actually going to draw too many cards, most likely. All right, so that is our first new hand. Uh, there we are again, we drew into a Cyclonic Rift, uh, there's a Mana Crypt as well, and then a whole heap of other stuff. Uh, draw two more cards to the Skull Clamp. Alright, and there's more Fast Mana in the form of a Sol Ring as well, a Mondrak for more token doubling. Don't have any means of an infinite hand size though. Oh yeah we do, I think that gives no max hand size. Yes it does, so we'll get that into play. Our opponent paying into the ward, so... Meteor Golem going to go on the top or bottom. And it's not worthy that we've got a Sundering Growth as well, so Tishana is a token now. We can make a copy of it. Um, oh, we decide, so put Meteor Golem on top. Alright, so definitely get down the Mana Crypt. We're still north of our starting life total. And that can get us into a Sol Ring. Definitely want to have the Curiosity Crafter available for the no max hand size. And obviously that draws us when tokens hit our opponents as well. Uh, then a Selfless Spirit might be a good idea to get into play. And I'll play the Phyrexian Altar as opposed to the Greater Good, because I think we've got enough cards in hand, and might be that we're desperate to go for a Cyclonic Rift or something. Sacrifice some stuff to make mana. And I think we can go for the Asper Sentinel. I'll actually uh, well tap for the correct mana first of all, would be a good start. Um, I'll actually sacrifice this straight away. So that we can get a couple of golem copies of it, because that will buff this thing. 
So sacrificing it for a single white mana, Brenard triggers, and we'll say yes to exiling it from the bin. Comes back in as a couple of golems, so like I said they are three threes, makes it more difficult for our opponent to pay the tax on that. And then equip, um, we'll just throw it on the Brenard again with the floating mana. And that was one hell of a turn, we'll pass it there. <laughs> and that is a right of replication, so obviously our opponent's gone for some kind of Nazgul clones build. Uh, Esper Sentinel already doing its job for us in this deck. And they're going to get a bunch of Nazgul creatures here. We draw into that Meteor Golem and another land. So the ring tempts our opponent. The level of this is maxed out. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, each opponent loses 3 life. And then whenever the ring tempts you, a plus counter on all of your Nazgul. So that's going to be some big Nazgul that we're having to deal with. They do still have the black mana held up for the commander. Yeah, so they're buffed up to 7 8s with 6 plus counters on them. Alright, and the client, I was really worried about the uh, the client. Everyone's yielded to these, so the client was really starting to bug out there. I'm going to try and dissuade the client from actually crashing on us entirely here. Uh, the Nazgul continuing to get buffed. There's still a couple of um, ring bearer triggers on here. Alright, that's awesome. So the Nazgul ending up at 30 plus counters on them. They are 31, 32s in fact. No means of giving them all haste in a Demir deck for only two mana. Um, you go for something... Oh, actually, you could go for Crashing Drawbridge. And they do have a Lightning Greaves. The Chroma's Memorial is like seven mana. And still deciding not to attack in. I mean, you'd at least go in with this so they can chump block with a bear. But deciding to hold it back. So, uh, yeah, it's probably worth us going for the Cyclonic Rift sooner rather than later, because assuming this player doesn't have any counter magic, this player is definitely about to draw into it, because he's got his commander held up and can draw 31 cards. We'd probably want to do it in response to him putting this on the stack, because if we go Rift, then he does this in response, he could draw into a free counter spell. So waiting for him to do this during the end step is probably the way. Anyway, the Virtue of Strength being played, so we'll draw some more cards to the Esper Sentinel. More interesting play actually might be making all of our stuff indestructible with Selfless Spirit and then going for the Organic Extinction. Got another Sack Outlet in the Ashnod's Altar now. Alright, so 3, 6, 9, 12 mana available for the Teamer player. Thanks to holding up the basics. Uh, that is a Fetch Quest. Mill 7, return a creature enchantment or land from amongst them. Onto the battlefield. And they get a copy of this. Alright, so getting themselves into a Sage of the Beyond, which will make their stuff cost two less to cast from Exile. Wasn't a card that was made for adventure, but it does work. It was a Foretell card from... Uh, that was Kaldheim, was it? And then with the original, that is a Sentinel of Lost Law. So when it enters, you can choose one or more. Return a target adventure card in Exile to your hand. Uh, exile the player's graveyard, or put and or put target card you don't own in exile that has adventure on the bottom of its owner's library. So yeah, they're exiling a graveyard and returning a creature that is the Beanstalk Giant. And you would think it would be the Demir player's graveyard that they exile here. Oh, did they target themselves with the exile? Yeah, I think that must be a mistake. Anyway, they should have the Beanstalk Giant back in hand now. Beanstalk Worm coming into play and they've still got two mana floating thanks to the ramp from the Sage of the Beyond. So that's a Bramble Familiar. Will be a Mana Dork for them. And still not done there. An Elusive Otter, so not going for the Grove's Bounty on that. Three cards in hand. And yeah, hopefully can't do anything about what we've got going here. Haven't seen any counter magic from this player. It'd be difficult to fit it in the deck, I think. And then there is a 2-3 Flyer still in the air here that can swing in, so... We take that in the air, uh, actually. Yeah, we've got a 3-3 three, three here that we could block that with. Not too worried about losing the 3-3 three, three if our opponent's got some kind of combat trick now that we've uh, got through a turn with our no max hand size. And plus we'd get two copies of this if it dies anyway. So our opponent forgetting about our two flying creatures here. Alright, so on tap with the Mana Crypt and I think we'll go for that Organic Extinction tactic. We lose the Mana Crypt Flip, draw into a Kindred Discovery. We're down to 46 cards in the deck, so naming Golem on this isn't going to be a wise move, I don't think. Um, let's sacrifice Selfless Spirit now to give all our stuff indestructible. 
Brennard will make a couple of flying copies of that. I suppose we could have got down the parallel lives first. But I don't think it's going to matter. So our creatures, more importantly our non-artifact creatures gain indestructible. We want to keep Brennard in play really, so um, they gain indestructible. Still in the draw phase here. And we'll go for the organic extinction if it gets countered, then we can always go for the um, cyclonic rift instead. And we'll go for some improvising here, I think. So tap down some creatures, it's only going to cost us four mana for this now. And all non-artifact creatures hopefully going to get blown up. I think the Demir play will be forgiven for countering here. I think we've left each other alone for the vast majority of the game. And there is a counter spell, we'll draw more to the Asper Sentinel. Can't actually remember if I have any counter magic in this deck, but we haven't drawn into it yet. Nope, that is a Rootborn Defences and a Yavamaya. So it looks like we are going to be reliant on the Cyclonic Rift. And we did force our opponent to go for the counter spell, obviously, which means that they did not get to draw a third of their deck with the commander. So luckily we've got a Cyclonic Rift that we can wipe the board with as well. And that successfully gets through. The Organic Extinction gets countered. And that is enough to have the Demir player scoop on us. So I was going to swing in over at this player anyway. Don't think we can get him this turn. Might be that he can blow up the board himself when it gets around to his turn again. Might as well turn everything in sideways here. Uh, this is... Oh, that's a 15-7 with double strike. Okay, so turns out we probably can get our opponent here. But like I said, this is the player that I was going to go after anyway. Uh, could populate to make some more um, make some more artifacts, and that would buff up the Bronze Guardian even more. Uh, first strike damage on some of the tokens that would be these is going to draw us cards to the Curiosity Crafter. So you can see how quickly we could deck ourselves if we're not careful. Arcane adaptation we drew into. We managed to get our opponent there down to minus three. Um, yeah, the Arcane Adaptation makes everything a Golem, which is relevant with things like the Kindred Discovery, before things have been sacrificed into the Brennard. Yeah, so that was actually closer than I thought it would be with regards to life. Probably should have uh, gone for the Sundering Growth onto something, or Rootborn Defences, maybe sacrifice something to turn it into a Golem, an artifact, and uh, that would have buffed this even further. But anyway, it turned out to be a reasonably convincing one, so hopefully you all enjoyed it. I really, really love the look of this thing as soon as I saw it during spoiler season, so hopefully you've all been looking forward to seeing it as well. If you would like to see more from Brennard, then be sure to leave it a thumbs up and leave comments in the comments section to help with YouTube's algorithm. Huge thank you to the patrons for their constant support as ever. I'm Tribal Kai. Thank you for watching.